Today we are going to learn how to make, complete, and submit a requisition form. The first thing we will do is make sure that we have our native internet banner icon on our desktop. If you do not have the icon on your desktop, then you will need to call the help desk at extension 2662. We will click on our icon. Our native banner will open to this screen. For training purposes, we are going to enter into the development database. When you are making an actual requisition, you will enter under the production database. Also, it is important to note that while you will train the development, you will not be able to complete a requisition form. I will go over the final screen at the end of the tutorial. It is very important you understand how to operate the last screen. Banner will ask us for our login information. This is your Sanford login. Go ahead and type that in. You should note here you will need to actually click on the password field. The program will not let you tab down. <clears throat> to bring up the requisition form, we will type F P A R E Q in into the go to field and press enter. Type next into the requisition field then click the next block button at the top. This is your requisition form. As you can see the order date field and transaction date field will, def will default to the current date. Since those are already filled out for us we will go down to delivery date <coughs> To enter today's date, simply hit D and tab over. The delivery date field must be filled out, but it will not appear in the purchasing order. We will leave the comments field blank unless we're making a standing order. If we are making a standing order, we will type standing order into the field, then tab down. The requester box will default to the user. We will go to the organization field and enter our organization number. If you do not know your organization number, click on the arrow to the side of the field to search for it, but you must fill this field out before you can move on. Once that is done, we will tab over to the ship to field and enter our department ship to code. The system will automatically fill in the address, contact, and attention fields, but you will need to make sure that all of the information is correct and that the attention field is complete. We cannot move on if the attention field is blank. Once we're sure that everything is correct, we will click the next block button. This is the, the suggested vendor block. We will start with the vendor field. If you already know the code of your desired vendor, then enter that in here. If you need to look it up, then we will click the down arrow. This will open up a new box. We will click entity name slash ID search. Just a note, the search is case sensitive, so a search for capital OFF will bring up a different list than if we search for lowercase OFF. To search, we will click the enter query button at the top. Then click in the last name field and enter as many letters of the name as we can remember along with a percent sign. We will then press F8 on our keyboard or we will click on the execute query button at the top. This will display our vendor list. We will double click on the vendor we want and this will automatically fill out the rest of the vendor field. If you cannot find the vendor you desire, then you will need to go to www.sanford.edu backslash purchasing backslash vendor requests and fill out the form for purchasing. You must have a vendor code to proceed with a requisition. After we have selected our vendor, press the next block button. The requisition field will now be filled out. You will want to go ahead and write that down for your records. We'll tab over to the description field and enter the description for our desired product. We will leave the commodity field blank because that is for purchasing use only. Next we'll go over to the unit of measurement field. We'll click the down arrow and choose the appropriate measurement. After the measurement is decided our cursor will automatically move over to the quantity field. We will enter the quantity we need. 
We need to be careful with this field and keep in mind the unit of measurement we selected. We wouldn't want to accidentally order 100 meters of material if we just needed 100 centimeters. We will move over to the unit price field and enter the price of our desired merchandise. Again, we will keep in mind the unit of measurement that we entered earlier. Also, there is no need to calculate the total price. That will be done for you. And remember, this is the price per item. If we want to request more than one item at a time, we will place our cursor in the first commodity field. Use the down arrow to go to the second line. Then fill in the description, unit of measurement, quantity, and unit price for this item. After we have entered all of our desired items, we will click next block to move on to the accounting block. We will tab over to the index field and enter our index code. If you don't know your index code, then you can click on the down arrow under index and find it there. Once we enter our index code, this will automatically fill in the fund and org fields. We'll need to go over and fill in the accounting field manually. Again, if we don't know this number, then we can just click the down arrow and search for it. We will continue to tab over until all of the blocks under the extended field are filled in. Under, under the development database, we will not be able to go any further because the program will not let us enter the fiscal year. But I am going to show you what you will do next to the form. This step is very important. If you do not properly complete the final block, then the form cannot be submitted successfully. This is what the final block will look like. Now we will need to make sure that all of our fields are balanced. We cannot complete the requisition form if it is not balanced. You will need to check the status fields for this part. If they do not say balanced, then you will not be able to complete the form. After we have made sure that everything is balanced, we will once more make note of the requisition number and click complete to send the form to the approver for approval. It is important to make sure we have clicked the complete button before closing the session. If we do not click this button, then the requisition will remain in suspense. If you have properly committed the form and submitted it, the form will automatically close. If you have to manually close the form, then it is not submitted. We have now finished making the requisition form. If you have any questions, you can call purchasing at extension 4084 or 2917.